So as I was saying is you will see the full screen on in front of you rather than just a presentation screen so that you can um, follow along with me. If you are able, I recommend having your Zoom window open in one on one side of your monitor and a Google Slides document open in on the other side of your monitor if you're able to. Um, I also recommend that if you are, if you can, please use Chrome. Um, Google Slides works um, best in its native browser, which is uh, Google Chrome, of course, of co though it does work in any browser. So if you are using uh, um, any of the other browsers, Firefox, et cetera, um, Safari, it will work. Um, however, you will find that there are add-ons that you can get for Google Slides that only work within the Google browser, uh, the Google Chrome browser. Um, some other norms, uh, please obviously keep your uh, microphone unmuted. Feel free to pop questions in the uh, chat window if you um, have any questions or um, raise your hand and hopefully I will see it. Um, and um, then I will uh, call on you. But I hope to walk you through some of these things step by step today. I'm going to give everybody another minute or so because I know people are coming in from other workshops and may have had to run, refill their water bo bottle, do um, anything else to get themselves ready to sit through another hour of PD. All righty then, well, thank you and welcome to uh, creating and using digital interactive notebooks um, using Google Slides. My name is Sarah Westhead. For those of you who don't know me, I am actually a certified Google trainer. I'm also the librarian and English teacher at Whitney Institute Middle School. Um, and uh, I, I'm the ed tech uh, geek. Uh, I love technology in the classroom. Today, we are going to be looking at learning how to create and use digital interactive notebooks in Google Slides. Our success criteria would include, I can describe what an interactive notebook is and why they are used. I can change the format of a Google Slides document. I can use interactivity tools in Google Slides. I can describe different kinds of activities that can be included in a digital interactive notebook and I can share my Google Slides document with others. Hopefully most of you will have used Google Slides at some level in the past, even if it's just as creating um, slide presentations for your students. Um, and you will notice that as I move through the slide presentation, I am keeping it in the full document rather than as a presentation. And the reason why is so that you can see where the different tools are on the screen as I select them. Um, I've also included a little note so you know as we are moving through the success criteria where we are at. So first of all, interactive notebooks. Um, quick show of hands, you can just do a thumbs up. If you have used paper interactive notebooks in your classroom with your students, So interactive notebooks are compile are if you aren't familiar with them, they are notebooks that students compile themselves. So you provide the resources and they begin building it. They keep a uh, table of contents at the front usually. They include foldables, lift the flaps, and more. And to be honest, they really do create a multi and promote a multi-sensory learning activity for a whole brain approach to learning. Um, it uh, takes into consideration different learning styles and students who require um, a, a being a variety of um, stimuli for learning. Um, it can actually help with promoting faster cognitive development and it helps allow students to be more involved in their own learning. 
But what does it mean when we're doing this digitally? So it basically, it's the same concept, but we're just using it in a dig digital fashion. Um, the tools are the types of tools and interactive activities will be a little bit different. They will be connected to the internet, um, but they still involve multi-sensory learning. And what is brilliant is that while most of us think of Google Slides as a presentation tool, it has some really, really cool um, add-ons to the program that allow for you to create uh, digital ver versions of interactive notebooks. So the first thing we want to do is learn how to change the format of a Google slide presentation. Um, when I'm going to open up to a brand new un un unstart unused uh, Google slide presentation here, and you can see it's opened up as a standard uh, wide screen. Um, this is a 16 by nine. So what you need to do is you may want to change the, um, the dimensions of your page um, so that you can print it out if you want to, or it looks a little bit more like a standard uh, paper. So what I'm going to do is I have my, my Google slide open. I go under file and I scroll down to page setup. You'll see widescreen 16 to nine is the ratio. If I click on that button and go to custom, I can then change the dimensions of my page. So we know that a standard piece of letter paper is 18 and a half, by, sorry, eight and a half by 11. So we're gonna put our, if we want it up um, upright as a um, portrait, so we can do 8.5 by 11 and I apply. And now I've completely changed the size and dimensions of my Google slide presentation. If I want, I can do other sizes as well, page setup, so 11 by 8.5. These are probably the most common formats that teachers use. Takes a second to think about it, so we've changed it. Um, another one is if you wanted half size pages, is eight and a half by five and a half uh, inches. So page setup, and we can do 8.5, oops, let's get my little decimal in there, um, by 5.5. And I apply, and again, I have a nice half sheet piece of paper um, slide on my presentation. So that is, it's super, super easy to change the dimensions of any paper. And whether you're creating a digital interactive notebook or you're simply trying to create a booklet for your students to provide with them um, for learning, for um, anything, you can just change the dimensions and make it really easy to print um, the pages on a regular size piece of paper. So you will be getting this slide presentation at the end of the session um, with all of these instructions in it. All right, so we have, we've looked at changing the format of our Google Slides. So the next thing is some of the interactivity tools in Google Slides. You can add hyperlinks, um, tabs, texts, buttons. You can add images and GIFs. You can add videos, voice, backgrounds, the explore tool, you name it. So there's, let's get looking at some of these. So the first one is the background. To change the background in Google Slides, you want to make sure you are on the slide and you're not clicked on anything in the slide. The minute I click on something in the slide, my toolbar has changed. You can see I've clicked on the white box in my slide. If I click on the, uh, workspace around it um, that changes and we can see this lovely little button called background. If I click on background, I can change the color. I can choose a gradient if I wish, or I can choose an image. And what is really, really cool is that Google Slides allows you to search the internet right within. So you can upload, you can connect your camera, you can add a URL, Let's click on Google image search. And so let's see rainbow, oops, I can't spell today, or I can't type rather. I can have a rainbow background, select the one that I want, click on insert, and then done. And my background has changed. And I'm just gonna delete this for the moment. 
and you can see I've changed my background. So if you want to put in something really fancy, or if you want to um, create a specific background, um, I'm going to go back, undo, um, by clicking the uh, control com um, command Z or hitting the reverse button, I can reverse changes that I've made in my document. Okay, so we can change our background. We can add hyperlinks. Hyperlinks can be done in a variety of ways. The first thing is to highlight a specific piece of text. This can be used as an extension activity. So if a student wants to get more information about a subject, they can simply click on the hyperlink and take them to a website with more information. Or if you have students that need to review the uh, vocabulary, they may not remember the definition of what an adjective is, what an adverb is, you can create a hyperlink and it allows them to um, click on it to so that they can double check that they understand the meaning of that word. So I simply highlight my text. And then in the toolbar along the top, you'll see this little chain, insert link. And then I can paste a link, www.google.com. And it, I can type it in, I can paste it in, I can even um, do a search. If I do a search in there, it'll find it for me and I can click on it. I select, select what I want and apply. And that text you can see now becomes hyperlinked. It's easy to pop up, you hover over it, it pops up and the student can then click on it. So that's using a highlighted text, but you can also create buttons um, or uh, tabs. So if you create a shape, again, along the top, we have the toolbar, we have the shape button, create the shape that you want. And this is, let's see, this one here, lots of teachers like because it makes it look like a tab. And we create it. I've created my tab. I literally double clicked on the shape and I can type inside it. I click on the shape and again, I can create a hyperlink. What is really cool is not only can I link to things outside of my class, uh, outside of my slides presentation, but I can click to uh, connect, connect, sorry, excuse me, I'm losing words today. I can make a connection to a slide within my slide presentation. So if I wanted to create a tab bar at the front, at the top, at the front of my booklet, I can um, connect it straight to a slide later on. I'm going to collect, select slide 10 for the moment and apply. So now when the student cl connects, clicks on that button, they simply click on it and then it connects them and it will take them to slide number 10. We are in slide number 10. Let's change that. Oops. We can remove a link. Let's create the link. Apply. And it jumps me right back. Okay. Does anybody have any questions so far? So like I said, we can search in the box, we can paste a link um, and copy and paste it in, or we can link it to another slide in a slide presentation. Uh, I'm gonna pull up a digital interactive notebook right now for you to have a, a look. And you can see we have, I love these little tab bars along the front of my uh, document. So if you simply click on the button, it'll take you to the appropriate slide and you can find the information there. You can go back, slide three. And what I also like to do when I'm creating my slide presentations is that I create a button on each page that the student can click on and it'll take them right back to the front to the table of contents or whatever page that they are, where all the information is for them to work on. There it is again in another example of one. So this is a student notebook that I've created and we simply click, click on the tab and it takes me straight to that lesson. 
All right, the next thing is images and GIFs. There are a couple of ways that you can add um, images and GIFs. The most easy one is if you use the toolbar, you'll see this little box with the little mountains inside it. You can add images uploaded from your computer, from your drive, photos, you can add a URL directly from your camera if your camera is plugged in or even from your um, webcam. But we're gonna use this search the web function. So if I click on search the web and this will pop open, this little uh, bar will open in the side and I can literally find any item I want. Find the image I want, click on it and insert. And there we go. I have my image. I can add whatever pictures I want. I can shrink it down and make it smaller, put it where I need it to be. Um, so you can upload from the computer or drive. You can search the internet or use buy URL for gifts. So if you go to a website like giphy.com, This adds that little bit of extra interactivity. So your students are actually getting a visualization of the item. So let's have a look. If I click on sharks, maybe we're learning about animals and their habitats. Okay, you can find the one that you want. All right, so here we go. Let's see, we've got a shark swimming right here. I'm going to click on the one that I want, go to copy link, and you want to use the GIF link, not the short link, not the HTML5 video link. Copy the GIF link, copy and paste, go back to your notebook, go to insert, go to image, again, so you can use the tabs or the toolbar, search, go, so by URL, not search the web. You paste, insert, takes a second. So now you actually have a GIF, an animation on your screen so the student can see the item in action. And I'll show you an example of this in a little bit. I think I've got it in one of my, in one of my um, notebooks that I have open. So GIFs are a great way to add that little bit of interactivity for the kids so that they can see it. Um, if you're really talented, you can learn how to make your own GIFs. Um, I know, I believe one of my sons has, has uh, dabbled with creating his own GIFs in the past. So because I'm sharing this document with you, I'm gonna delete these items out for the time being. The next thing is that you can insert a video. This is super, super cool. So if you are giving a, a student a notebook and you want a video for them to refer back to, maybe it's a video you've shown in class or it's a video you want, to, want them to watch for homework, you simply go to um, insert, select video, and you can see there's a lot of op several options that you can find. You can actually search YouTube right inside um, I personally prefer to go to YouTube, find the video I want, and get the share link. Um, you do not want to get the link straight from the URL. You want to go down underneath the video screen. There'll be a button that says share, and then you can get a copy link. But here we go. Let's have a look. We're going to look for a video on adverbs. So here we go. We have a video we want. We select, select it. Come on. My internet has just slowed down tremendously. I'm going to stop share real quick. Stop that. Hi, Sarah, quick question for you. Yep. Why don't you sure. want to get the um, URL? Um, I'll show you, let me show you that then. Since mine is, my computer is slowed down tremendously, I probably have too many windows open. Um, so if I go to YouTube, and I'm just going to turn my volume up a little bit more. There we go. So for example, we find our video, find our video adverbs. Okay, what's an adverb? We click on the video we want. 
I'm going to pause that. Here's the video. It's beginning to uh, load. Underneath the video, you'll see the share button. Select the share button. And you're going to want to copy this link. Okay. Sometimes it shows up the same in the uh, URL at the top. Sometimes it doesn't. And this is the shorter link and most direct link. So if you copy that button from the share, and stop that, and we go back to our slide presentation. So if you have your link and you go on to the YouTube one, you can just simply paste and search, and you find your video. And for some reason, it does not want to let me do this right now. There's been some problems with Google um, in the lot. They've been doing some updates in the last couple of days. And this, some weird things have been happening. So I can put in by URL as well. Select. There we go. Now it's doing it. So it creates the video. Um, you can even adjust. Say you don't want the students to watch the first 30 seconds of it. You can even change the start and end time of when the video is playing. So say you wanted it to start at 30 seconds, change that to 30 to the end. And you can change this to play on click, which means it'll pr play pretty much automatically. Or if you select it to play manual, then it will only play when the student clicks on the video link. Okay, you can add size, rotation, position, etc. I'm going to close that little format option window and put it in. Say you have put the video in and you for, you need to say, oh, I've got to go back and fix that. I don't want them to watch the last 30 seconds of the video. Click on the video, right click on it, and then you can go to format options and that window will pop back up again so you can make the change. If you just want video and you don't want it to play, you can even, uh, sorry, you don't want to play the sound, you can mute the audio if you want as well. So I can shrink it down, I can make it small and big or however, whatever size, place it on the screen wherever I want and go from there. You can also upload a video from your computer or your drive. Um, this is particularly beneficial if you, we ever have to go back to remote learning you can create your workbook for the week and the students can go back and work in it. You can put a video, really, really short video of yourself giving the instructions on the instructions page and the students can watch the video, go back, stop, pause, etc., and watch what they need to watch. All right, I'm going to delete that out because you are going to get a copy of this same presentation. So the next one is on voice or audio. Now, one of the things about audio is that your audio needs to be saved to your Google Drive. You simply, once you've got your audio there, you go to insert, add audio, and any audio that you have in your drive will appear. So I select the one that I want, hit select, enter, and this little tool, little button will appear. Um, again, you have the format options if you want. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So it's, come on. So we have this little button that we can move around the screen. And this is student simply press. Hello, slide. my name is Sarah Westhead, and welcome to Digital Lessons with Google Slides, a one hour. That was from a previous um, uh, presentation that I did. Now, there is a program that you can add in uh, an add on to Google Slides. It does only work when you are working in Google Chrome, and it is this program called Moat. You'll see this purple uh, little um, circle with the M in it, the script M. And that allows you to record directly into Google Slides. Um, that we're obviously not going to go into that now, but if you go to Moat, um, you can um, and learn more about it. To add it on, if you go to the Add-ons button, you can go to Get Add-ons, and you can search for Moat there, or you can go to the Google Chrome Store. Clearly, my internet 
is slowing down something fierce today. All right. Hi, Sarah. So just search for moat for in there. So then you can add audio for your students, especially those students that may have some reading challenges um, or they need to they learn better by hearing as opposed to by reading. You can add those voice notes in there. Then the last tool I want to show you is the explore tool. Hi, Sarah. The explore tool Before you go on. Um, is similar to insert, inserting image, but it does a little bit more than that. And it's a it exists in a lot of the different Google products. So you can um, add in information. Yes, Miss Aileen Garns, you had a question? I was trying to tell you that someone else was trying to ask a question. Hi, Sarah. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me now? I think we're having some voice sound yeah. problems. So D Reed is trying to, she's actually speaking right now. She's you know to, what? You may need to type your question in Google chat, in the chat bar rather, not the Google chat bar. Um, this has happened to me with students on occasion where my ability to hear students has suddenly disappeared while I'm using Zoom. So if you wouldn't mind typing it in the chat bar, I can answer your question that way. While you're doing that, I'm gonna show everybody the explore tool. So if you look at the screen, my uh, workspace, can you get an audio file from your computer? You will need to drag and drop it and save it into your Google Drive for you to access it in Google Slides. The reason why is that Google Slides is based online and so it cannot access a document on your computer. Um, so if you save it onto your Google Drive, then it is accessible there. In fact, what I actually use um, for myself is I have an iPhone. Um, I use the Voice Memos app on my phone. I record my voice and then I save it to my computer. It's called Mote, M-O-T-E, is the add-on. Okay. So the explore tool, if you see at the bottom, there is this little, looks like a place marker with a star in it. If you hover over it, the word explore appears. And this is an internal search engine and you can search for anything. So if I go back to my Koala, oops. Koala, I like using Koalas. Search for whatever I'm looking. It's gonna give me links to the internet It'll give me images. And if I have anything in my drive that's related to koalas, it will appear there as well. Um, in Google Docs, this even has, using the Explore tool, even allows you to um, create citations um, directly built into the program. But if I go to images, I click on my image, I get my koala, select on it, select it, come on. Here we go, we're gonna insert it. I'm going to close that window. What is really cool about this tool is that when it's imported, whether the student is doing the inserting of the image or not, it automatically built, includes that citation. So you can see the pop-up of where that photo came from is directly built into the slide. So therefore, we're setting an example for our students in making sure that we are giving proper um, credit uh, when we are using other people's work. So the Explore tool is a fantastic tool. Um, if you're using the Explore tool, you could create a box and the students then have to go find their image. Um, I'll show you an example of that in a moment. So does anybody have any questions in regard to the actual tools that we can use to create our Google, um, our slide notebook? If any, I'll, if I, any questions pop up into the chat bar, please just put them in the chat bar because again, the volume control thingy is not working for whatever reason. So there are different types of student activities that we can have. We can have note-taking pages. We can have manipulatives, which are kind of the drag and drop activity. We can use the explore tool. Um, digital stickers. Um, I 
we'll be giving you a your own digital notebook as well as a, today's slide presentation, um, which has links to teach you how to make those Bitmoji stickers, um, graphic organizers, comic books, student choice boards, um, illustrated student writing. So let's have a look at a digital interactive notebook here. This is the one that you're going to be getting. I'm just going to scroll on down so we can look at the different kinds of pages that we can include. So here we go. First page is just a basic notebook paper. You're going to notice that I am using the um, workspace outside of the slide itself. You can use that. Your student, when they are working on their interactive notebook and they're utilizing their interactive notebook, they are using it in regular in the regular format, not in the presentation mode. So you can use this workspace for extra information, for instructions um, that you students need to, um, to have a note of. Um, I've made this one fancy. I've got notebook paper in the background um, for my writing. Um, I've added a little pencil just to make it pretty. Again, I've got my button back to the table of contents. Um, for students who need a little bit more structure, we have, you can create a one that includes your lesson title. The student has to then type in their learning intention and success criteria, or you can put these in directly for uh, your students in advance. And they just simply click on the box to start typing, typing their notes here in that space. Okay. Um, some schools, I know here at Whitney, can you link this book to Schoology? Yes, and I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. You definitely can link it to Schoology. Um, Whitney, we use Cornell Notes. So I've created a page that um, represents the Cornell Notes um, with their title, class info, date at the top, learning intention and success criteria, and then space for their key points and clues, their notes and details, and their summary. Um, here we go. We have, this is good for a choice board or for an assignment slide. So for example, if we go back to remote learning at any time, this could be a front page of your slide for the work for the week. Yes, you can make this a template. And I'm going to be giving you this a template, okay, as a template so that you can copy and paste. Um, so for example, you have your link and then the student Simply, you have Monday's assignment, they simply click on the button, and if this was linked to another slide in the, in the slide presentation, they could click on the button and it'll take them straight to Monday's work. Okay, or you can do this as a choice board, and again, choice number one in the first box, you click on it, it'll take them to the, sl the slide with that choice, and they can work on it. Um, we can include uh, different types of graphic um, graphic organizers. We can do a T chart. Um, sticky notes are really really helpful. There is a shape in the shapes box. Go under shape, under the first one, and you will see down here there is a little sticky note with a folded corner. You can create them. You can uh, create a stack of them, and the students can just simply drag and drop them where they need to to put them and put their information, um, put the double click on it and type inside it. So some teachers will actually give them, give as many sticky notes as they might need in advance. Um, plot diagram. So they're create, mapping out their story using a plot diagram. Uh, I am an English teacher. So hence a lot of these things, I think this way, um, the vocabulary, um, vocabulary graphic organizer, um, the KWL or the KWHLAQ chart. You can even create a word wall or glossary at the back of your students' notebooks. And readers are writers' journal, so you're going to include all of these. Now, I wanted to show you some of the interactive, more interactive ones. So here we go. Um, here I can create a digital manipulative. So if all of my apples are sitting in the tree, this is what the students see when they open their notebook. I've got five apples, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna take three away and put them in the basket. 
I just simply drag and drop. How many do I have left? They can then create their answer and type it in to the box. And you can make this bigger if you wanted to. You can preset it. So let's make this bigger. Okay, so they type their answer. Um, another example, I think it's P5 in social studies where we are matching habitats. We're learning about animal habitats. You can give the students the different habitats that you've been learning about with the uh, images of the animals below and the students simply drag and drop, click and drag into the box. I'm gonna go in a little bit closer on this page, let's zoom in. So you can see this one a little bit better. You're gonna see I've added a GIF for my coral reef. So my students, again, I'm bringing it a little more alive for my students. And in this case, with the African Plains, I've actually created a hyperlink. So if the student clicks on it, they can take them to the hyperlink. It's gonna open up a new tab for me. It's gonna take a second, because again, my internet's a bit wonky today. And in this case, I've actually taken them to Google, um, Google Earth, Google Maps, and it will take them directly to uh, the Serengeti National Park so that they can explore the park a little bit more themselves. They scroll down, we have photos that people have posted um, while they're there and videos, and you can get more information and explore that area that your student is learning about. We're gonna go back out. Um, again, interactive. So a student, maybe you're doing some poetry, you're, com you're trying to blend your animal habitats with some English, the students are gonna write some poetry. So you can create a graphic organizer and they can put in some bullet points about what they know about that habitat. Here's the bullet points, they can type in, uh, what do you, I know about this animal? So koalas live in Australia. They eat leaves. So they put their notes there. They can then use the Google Explore tool to find their image. You can see I found it straight from the internet. They can drag it in and place it in that spot. And then, then they can write in the last box that you can write your, um, they can write their poem if that's what the activity is. So there's lots of options there. The last is the digital stickers that I wanted to show you. Um, so here are some examples. And when you receive this notebook at the end, um, there is a video here to show you how to create your own digital stickers um, using Google Drawings and then Google Keep. And by storing them in Google Keep, you literally can pop Google Keep open. So I'm just gonna shift some stuff out of my way. So I've got Google Keep here, this little yellow button on the side, click on it. You'll see I've got some um, stickers that are here already. Yeah, I got my uh, SBG stickers. I can literally drag and drop the sticker onto the page so that you can create stickers for your students. Um, you can give them stickers to use. You can use them for scoring, any number of things, because you know our kids love their stickers and we go from there. If you've grabbed the wrong one, it's now just an image on the page so I can select it and delete it if I need to. All right. So using Google Slides with students. So I'm gonna show you a few different ways that you can share your Google Slide with your students. So the first thing is that you can create a forced copy. Um, for students who are having trouble accessing Schoology for whatever reason, um, this might be an option for them. If you go to the share button, the first thing you want to do is make sure that this is set for anyone on the internet with the link can open it. And the reason why is if the student is not logged in to their MOED email and account on Google, they may have problems opening it. If they're accidentally, they click on it and they are accidentally in mom's account, they can still access it and do the work. 
So you make sure that this is anyone with the internet can get the link. You can see if I change that, the, I'm in my personal account, so you won't see um, just MOED, but you can put restricted anyone with the link. And if you are in your Google, school Google account, then you'll see um, anyone within the Bermuda Ministry of Education will appear there as well. And you also want to make sure that when you are sharing this button, that this is set as editor, okay? And that's okay because you're not going to give them access to your original copy. I'm gonna copy my link, click on the copy button and done. So I'm just gonna create a little toolbar here, a text box rather. And I paste, I'm gonna paste my text, paste this link right in here, okay? If you look at that URL, after the last slash, it says edit question mark USP equals sharing. If we take that, we highlight it and delete it and change this to copy. Whoever then clicks on that link will then be forced to create their own copy of that document. So that's a really good way you can share the document. This way the student has their own copy. So you change that last little bit of coding after the last slash to copy, and then you can share the link. You can do this with your colleagues as well. If you have a document, you can do this with any Google document, actually, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Sheets. You can do this to share the link and then they get their own copy of it. So then when the student has, opens it up and they save it to their own account, they then click on share and type in your email and then they can share it to you so that you can then go back and mark their notebook. So this is a workaround. If you're having trouble with Schoology for whatever reason, this is a workaround to do that. I recommend to my students, then again, I'm teaching M M2s, M3s, say Mrs. type in a message, Mrs. Westhead, this is um, Mary, this is my workbook that I've been working on and they can share it back to you. And you will get an email stating that their work, that they're sending their work, sharing their work back to you. So I'm gonna cancel that. Let's go back out and delete this real quick. Now, if you are using Schoology, when you create your assignment, you wanna make sure that you are creating an assignment and not just adding information. Create the assignment, especially if you want, you want to be able to review the student's work. When you go into Schoology, add the slides by clicking on the Google Drive assignments next to the assignment, assign from app. So when you're adding your a document, you're actually adding the Google slide instead of a Microsoft, or a, a Google Word document, Google Docs document, et cetera. Um, if you do not have the Google Drive assignment app added, you can click on, there's some four, there's a tiny little icon at the top, four boxes. I'm gonna see if I can pull this up. I don't use it in this browser very often. So if I go to Schoology, I meant to have this open. Um, I'd have to pull it up in my other browser because I don't use it in this browser. If you give me a second, I can show that to you. Unless, do you think you, how many of you are actually familiar with how to add documents to a Schoology assignment? You can just show me by raising your hands. I meant to have this window open and I forgot. Okay. And my computer has got so many things open, it's not happy with me at the moment. Um, all right, so I'm going to stop share and pull this up real quick.
if it'll let me log in. Unfortunately, it's not doing that right now. I'm going to stop share and come back to the presentation. My apologies for that, guys. But yes, if you go open up Schoology, you will see along the blue bar at the top, a, there is a bunch of different icons. There's a search button. There is a what looks like four little boxes. If you are unable to add Google Assignments, you can click on that button and go to the App Center and you can find Google Drive Assignments app to add there so that you can add it in. But you want to make sure that your Google slide is the actual assignment and not just an attachment to your assignment. All righty then, we are just about running out of time. I wanted to make sure that you have um, time for questions. Um, I am going to be putting in a few um, links. I apologize for this. Um, as a Google trainer, I am required to collect my own evaluation data. Um, of course, the uh, SBG department has their own as well, um, evaluation links. So I have just placed four links in the chat room. The first one is the link to this presentation. The second one is a sample notebook, which is this one here. Okay, so you will get access to this notebook, which is a notebook on how to create your own notebooks. It has videos and links to other information there. Um, especially at down at the bottom, you'll see there's a bunch of videos um, with tutorials. Um, also, where can you find pre-made ones? Um, a great place is Slides Mania. Um, she is not an educator. She just loves this stuff. And so she's got interactive templates, notebook style, all sorts of stuff that you can use to create your own. Um, they may be a great place to start um, because they've got the design element already done. So you're just adding content, brightly colors, all different age groups, etc. The third link that you will see is the personal feedback form. That is my personal one. Um, if you could do that, I would appreciate it um, because then I can contain, keep data from my um, own records. Um, there is the uh, um, attendance link for today and the evaluation link for the SBG for today. Now I'll open up the floor to any questions if anybody has any and I can go back and try and show you something. I'm still trying to get Schoology up and I think I've got it up now. So let me uh, new share. Here we go. So there we go. I'm in Schoology to show you this. Um, so if you do not have, uh, actually, let me go to an assignment first. Let's go to my classes. So I'm going to add materials. Add assignment. So there we go, the Google Drive assignments. If you do not see this button here, um, then you will have to add it. You simply click on it and you can find the document that you want. You can do a search in your Google Drive. You can select the one you want and just make sure that you're selecting and adding the slide presentation instead of some other document. And then click attach and then create your assignment. If you do not see that Google Drive assignments button in your assignments when you're creating assignments, this is that little box I was telling you, the icon with the four boxes at the top. I click on that. It opens the App Center. And you can add Google Drive assignments. Click on it. Install LTI app. Agree, and then select the classes that you want to use the app with. Okay, and then you click install. I know I already have them installed, as you can see.
All right, anybody, any questions anywhere? I know I've given you a lot of links there. Um, you do not need to install the assignments app into your Chrome browser. That is purely for Schoology. Um, yeah. But you can see there's lots. If you look at the top of my Google Chrome, I've got Bitmoji there. I've got Google Translate. I've got Screencastify, which is for recording. Um, when I'm making videos, I have another one called Loom, which also does the same thing. Um, this is another recording um, add-on for Chrome itself. Um, there's a ton of different items that you can add um, to your toolbar to Chrome itself. And then, of course, there are add-ons that you can add specifically to a specific document. So, uh, for example, in Google um, Slides, uh, I have extensive fonts, which is to add more fonts to my options to my um, slides. I have Nearpod, I have Pear Deck, um, Background, which is for more background options, Unsplash images to get photos. Um, so you simply go to get add-ons and it'll open that up so you can find add-ons. Um, if you are looking at your fonts and you don't like what you see, you want more options, um, I simply go to the font button when I'm, and you can go to more fonts and all of the other fonts that are installed in Google Slides will appear. And you just simply click and it'll add them to your list. Okay, so you can scroll down, let's go, you can do pop-ins. I've just added it and click okay. And then those fonts will appear in my list. Those are all built in Google Slides fonts. So there we go. I just added pop ins. It's right there. And there are options with it as well. Any other questions? Um, if you, if it, you have a question that pops up in the future, there are two ways to get a hold of me. I'm going to give you both of my emails. Okay. And so just feel free to drop me an email if you have a question and I can work you through it. I can give you a link to a video, something that might help you. Um, or I have even on occasion created super quick videos for people and shared them to them um, to give them help with that sort of stuff. So if you have no questions, I'm gonna let you get um, log off now so that you can get a stretch, get a fresh cup of tea or coffee, some a drink of water. Actually, it's lunchtime, it's 12 o'clock, so go get your lunch. Um, be sure you get away from your computer um, for a couple of minutes because this is a, a long day uh, to sit in front of the computer. You're welcome, I'm glad you've enjoyed this. Um, I look forward to seeing, you know, I, please share with me um, any notebooks that you create. Um, it would be great to create a, can I do an entire morning or afternoon? Um, I will be looking at doing a certified educator level one course in the near future. Um, I've got to work out dates for that. So if you're looking to learn all the details of all the basics and all of the Google products, um, hopefully that'll be coming down the line in the future. Um, the best place would be going to my website. Um, you'll see some old stuff on there and it's not been updated, um, but stuff will appear there. Um, there is also a Google group, GEG Bermuda, G-E-G, -E Google Educator Group Bermuda. Um, you can find on Facebook where I post information and links and resources and updates to Google products there. So we would love to have you join us there. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day, guys. Yeah, give me a second. Um...